everyone. Welcome to Book Chat. My name is Leslie and I'm the Reading Machine Coordinator for Monterey County Free Libraries. Today I have a super special, super spooky book chat for us. If you've been watching all month, you'll know that October has been devoted to one book called Four Past Midnight by Stephen King. It's a collection of four novellas. Um, today we're going to chat about the last novella in Four Past Midnight, which is called The Sun Dog. The Sun Dog is exactly 150 pages long, and it's the one story in Four Past Midnight that I had a really hard time getting into when I first read the collection over 20 years ago. As a matter of fact, I think that the time, this time, when I read this book, that was the first time that I actually made it through the story, so. Um, but it's it's a good story. It's just for some reason, all those years ago, when I was reading this collection, I could never make it through the Sun Dog. So, whatever. As with all of the stories in this collection, the Sun Dog starts off normally enough. Um, Kevin, the protagonist, is turning uh, 15, and for his birthday, he receives a Polaroid camera, specifically a Sun uh, 660. That's the model. So the thing about Polaroids is that they take photos that you can view instantly. Um, they're not on a screen like digital cameras or smartphones, but they require special film and you press the button to take the photo and the camera spits out the picture. You can then watch the picture develop. Um, it's, that's just a mini tutorial for those of you who are watching who might not be familiar with Polaroid technology. I'm sure most of you are, but just in case. So anyway, Kevin immediately starts taking pictures with his new Polaroid camera, um, but none of the pictures turn to be out turn to turn out to be things that he's taken pictures of. So instead, the photos are showing a big, scary-looking black dog. Um, and not only that, with each photo taken, there's a slight change. Um, it's kind of like a flip book. If you've ever seen one of those where you flip through it really quickly. And um, you can see the movement if you flip through the pictures. Um, it's easy to see when you go through the photos that way that the dog is moving towards the camera and he does not look friendly. And remember, he's this big hulking black beast. Okay, so it's not like a really sweet, you know, dog that you see down the street. Um, it's like a hellhound. <laughs> so Kevin is flummoxed and disturbed. So he takes his camera to the local man named pop Merrill and um pop fixes things and works on things and so um he wants pop to take a look at it and offers advice as to what to do with the camera so another thing about pop is he's the type of guy who's always looking to make some money off of someone or something so he manages to keep kevin's camera for himself and try to sell it to people who collect paranormal items the only problem is that none of those collectors, once they see what the camera does, they don't want it. And here's a piece of a conversation that Pop has with a set of supernatural obsessed sisters. Pop said, I brought the camera out so you ladies could look at it. What I mean to say, he hastened on, observing their expressions of consternation, is I know how much experience you ladies have in this field. I thought you might have some advice on what I should do with the camera, is what I mean to say, he finished. Destroy it, Eleusippius said immediately. I'd use dynamite, Melusippius said. Acid first, then dynamite, else Eleusippius said. Right, Melusippius finished. It's dangerous. You don't have to look at that devil dog to know it. She did look, though. They both did, and identical expressions of revulsion and fear crossed their faces. You can feel evil coming out of it, Eleusippius said in a voice of such portentousness that it should have been laughable, like a high school girl playing a witch in Macbeth, but which somehow wasn't. Destroy it, Mr. Merrill, before something awful happens, before... Perhaps you'll only, you'll notice I only say, perhaps it destroys you. So that, let me just say there, that conversation is really good foreshadowing 
and you should definitely read this story to find out what happens. It's a really classic Stephen King story. It's got a great premise. Um, he's really good at coming up with really original material. So anyway, um, that concludes my series on Four Past Midnight, the 1990 collection from horror master Stephen King. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section. I hope you all have a very safe and happy Halloween, everybody. It has been a pleasure doing this series for you. I hope you will check out this book because it's awesome. And I'd like to know what you think. So take care, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye.